to Abu Bakr, cross-checked with the people who are around. Again, people were involved. This is something that I cannot stop stressing. As opposed to all the other history of scriptures, where people were kept away, doors were closed, things were secretive, changes were made. The Quran was done publicly in the masjid. And the, the stairs of the masjid, people were coming to check, to know, to say, yes, no, this, yes, that. And they, in the end, when you look through the history, there are some people who were, were reluctant to give out, for example, their copies that they have written by their own hands. And so on. So people will try to say, see, they didn't agree. But people are so interesting that they, they jump to conclude so fast. And if you read the whole history, you find that every single person agreed. Every single. Full consensus. Everyone, including Ibn Masood, and people will say that Ibn Masood has his own copy and so on. Everyone agreed. Everyone. No one ever disputed the Quran. No one. So, in front of everyone, the Quran was copied. It was a committee of 12 people to oversee the task. And some of them were Ubaid ibn Kaab, as we said, Zayd ibn Thabit, some from uh, Quraysh and Ansar, both of them. Arranging the copy, as we said, and they made, according to some scholars, six or so, many, so copies, and they basically sent them to different parts of the world. Now the final copy, which was sanctioned before Uthman, before Uthman sent it off, was read to the companions. And this was read in Uthman's presence. Final recitation. They duplicated a copy and all of them have agreed and they sent him to the different nations in the Islamic State with a reciter, with a person to teach them. Not just the book. Last time we talked about receiving the book and having a teacher with the book, right? Same principle was applied. So the book was sent and a teacher was sent to make sure that the people are learning the Qur'an properly. Now, here comes one part in the history of Islam that a lot of people know, don't know about. However, and some people might be shocked, but that is because we lack knowledge. And I'll show you very easily why. What did Uthman do with all the bones and all the leaves and all the things that the Qur'an was written about? Burned. He burnt it. He burnt it. Now a lot of people say, oh man, did they burn the Bibles? Now Muslims are burning the Qur'an. Why did he burn it? What? There's a standard copy already, yes. Now imagine that you had to carry those bones and leaves and everything with you. Taib, how do you get rid of a Quran even today? If it's ripped or broken or someone has made notes on it or has ripped part of it, it's missing and so on. How do you get rid of it? You burn it. This is actually the best way to get rid of it. So Uthman didn't burn the Qurans to hide anything. He burned the Quran so that's the only way he could have got rid of all this stuff. Now, another thing it is though, that's very important that we said already that it, was, it has been made in a book now. It has been standardized. Why did he burn though? No, he burnt it because a lot of the companions, and this is reported from Prophet Muhammad he said, whoever has written anything other than Quran at the beginning, when he, the, the Quran was written, let him erase it. Let him erase it. Why? Because Sahabas were making notes as they're writing explanations, they're making their tafsir on the Qur'an. So a lot of the parchments of the Qur'an had certain things written on the site. Some people will make, that's why he wanted to make sure that the two don't get misunderstood. You understand? So these were burnt. Everything was burnt. The standardized copy of the Qur'an was there. The memory of the Sahabas were there. Everything was there, written in memory, kept in parallel, unaltered, unchanged. Right. If we look at the history 
of the Bible on the other side, actually a lot of these footnotes have made it into the text. Because those who have collected it did not pay the same attention to the text. So we find a lot of times that you find in the bottle, especially a new international version, you find at the bottom of the page that this has been an interpolation or this has been this. It's, there's notes saying that. And especially if you read the introduction, the introduction is something very important for Christians specifically who believe that their book is the Word of God. Because that is very important. It gives a lot of insight as to what happened into the history of the Bible and what do current scholars from 50 different denominations believe about the Bible saying that it suffers great errors first of all because it's been translated and people go based on a translation but see this didn't happen with the Quran now someone might say well how do we not know that some of the things ended up in the Quran text because it's being preserved in the Arabic language and when you read Quranic text and you read tafsir, even hadith, the styles are totally different. I can, any one of you can put in anywhere in the Quran, even though I didn't memorize the whole Quran, but I can read it quite good. And you can insert a hadith or parts from a hadith or a tafsir in there, and I can tell you, I'll read it, and I'll tell you this is not from it. And actually, almost anyone who studies the Quran and learns it, knows it. And I remember very well that one of the brothers, his little girls were studying in Islamic school and they're doing the research and they came upon the reading some parts of the Quran on the internet and it was a site that was by some of the Yahud and the, the girl's father told me, he's like the girls called me and said, Baba, Baba, something wrong with the Quran and he said, what? He <laughs> said, it's nothing wrong with the Quran so he went and checked and they're reading and he said, what? Sounds not right here and they actually, these people, astaghfirullah, they try to play around and insert certain words in this internet site. Okay? So, right away, the man says, I could tell that, you know, they're, they're like changing things and adding things. And there's, even today, things. And there's, even today, subhanAllah, there's a book called The True Furqan, written by a very infamous person who debated Ahmadira back in the days. His name is Shurosh. And... You will say, you know, you word in Arabic actually. You will say like, Bismi uh, Allah al Ab wal Ibn wal Ruh al Qudus, you know? Like, it's like just a mess, you know? You're reading like, what? Like, this is, it's like, it's like Musaylim al Kadhab, the Musaylim al Raya, when he tried to make something like the Quran and start saying about, you know, the elephant, the elephant has a long trump and a, you know, and a, and a, a tail and just silly, you know, people are laughing at him. And that's what it is, it's laughable. Actually, no one can change the Qur'an. No one. And we will talk a little bit about it later. But, so basically what happened is the Qur'an was sent to different parts of the world with the reciters. How did the people teach the Qur'an? This is something very important. Till today, this is available and this is happening. It was taught through a means called a sana or ard. Both ways, sometimes coupled together, being very strong. So basically, the teacher would recite. And then the student would recite back to it. Sometimes without the book actually. No book. No book. No, no mushaf in front of them. From mouth to mouth. And I know quite I know some people who till today they've received it like that. And they memorize, there's one lady, a uh, friend of my wife, who has gotten it mouth for mouth, without the book. So they used to teach it as such. And the student used to read it back. And of course you have the book to check. And people read from the book. And you do from the book. And the sheikh is a half of the Quran. And he's teaching the boys. To the point that so many different techniques were devised that the Qur'an was being memorized by thousands and hundreds of thousands of people. Hundreds of thousands of people. And today, specifically today, we have 10 million. The approximate number of people who have memorized the Qur'an is 10 million. That's a lot. Today, 
imagine the 1400 years of how many people have passed away and before even more have memorized the Quran. Now I want you to pay attention to this and think about this. The Quran has been preserved by Allah Himself. This is a miracle. No other book has been able to be memorized as the Quran is. Anyone here has memorized parts of the Quran. Some of you maybe have memorized the whole Quran. No one can ever erase that. People can take the books and burn them. That's why Uthman could have taken all the books and burned them if he, you know, if he wanted to do something. But he could have not killed all the Muslims who have memorized the Quran. Do you understand that? The Quran can never be erased. You would have to kill every single Muslim alive in this world to be able to get rid of the Quran. But you can burn all the books. It can happen that they'll have a coup or something or you know, martial law and just take all the Qurans and burn them and so on and so forth. But that doesn't mean anything because a, a, a Qari from Indonesia and one from Africa and one from Arabia will get together and will write it back within a few days. Do you understand? So in order to change the Quran, in order to do anything to the Quran, you would have to literally kill every single Muslim. Because even though there's 10 million people who have memorized the whole Quran, there is every single Muslim in this world who have memorized some of the Quran. So maybe you know 10 Jews, and I know 15, and you know 20. And whatever, another one knows five, we'll put them together, we got the whole Quran. And another guy has knows three, and you two, and five, and eight, and ten. Shh. Again, do you understand? You can't get rid of the Quran. That's why, Do you understand what it means? People have, during, for example, Ceausescu in Romania, Eastern Europe, they used to burn books and get rid of information and so on. They, you know, during the communist era in Russia and so on, they used to be able to get rid of information because people were not able to memorize it. People can memorize poetry, they can memorize parts of the Sanskrit or something like that, but no one can memorize the force. The Pope himself, he, he does that, he didn't memorize one gospel. Forget about the four, forget about the Bible, one gospel. One chapter of the gospel. He did not commit to memory. This is the Pope, the ultimate one, the one who sits supposedly on the chair and receiving his divinely inspired. So we need to think and realize what, how the Quran is different. Why does Allah say that He will guard it? How did He guard it? You see, I remember subhanAllah, there was a story that we read in one of the books a Christian man, I think it was in Iraq, in Baghdad. And he was, basically said that he wanted to test this Quran. So, he took some copies and started making some changes into them. And started selling them. So he was selling on the street, you know, buy a Quran, people were buying Quran. And he found that people would come back to him and go crazy on him, like what? This is not, the, you know, it's not Quran. And he's like, I just started taking things and moving them and erasing them because I wanted to see, do the people really say, what well, you know, is this the Quran? Like, and he said that I didn't find one person that I sold the Quran to that didn't come back and complain about what is this Quran, and I got in trouble. And he said that this made me become Muslim because I realized, because he said. I did the same with the Bible and no one came back to me. No one came back to me. This is amazing. So he realizes like, whoa, I mean, subhanAllah, Allah has guaranteed that this book will be guarded. We have today kids who are six years old who have memorized the whole Quran. And another thing that we need to understand that the Qur'an is linked through the Islam all the way to Prophet Muhammad So actually every person who memorized the Qur'an with the Shaykh will link to this Isnad. And Isnad is a chain. The Shaykh has learned from his Shaykh, who has learned from his teacher, 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 who has learned from Abu Huraira for example, or from Kaab, 
or from any of the other companions.